Right, happy new year. I'm Shred901, there's another one I've just uh, got working. Uh, that's what I've been doing mainly. Uh, I've been fixing CBs, doing about 10 to 15 a week at the minute, so we're really, really busy. Um, but yeah, I just thought I'd show you what I'm up to at the moment. This is something I looked at um, before Christmas, and then I've just jumped back onto it now. This is your standard coffin mic, and what I've decided to do is to make a Roger Beep mic. Uh, I do like a Roger Beep, but not all of my sets have it. And um, I was going to use for this project the tiniest of boards. Let me just show you. Uh, there are some examples of this circuit out there in the wild. I'm using a version of it uh, from a chappy who I'll link or put on, on the screen in a second. But um, look at that, goodness gracious. Look at that for an odd. That is a fully fledged microprocessor on there. That's an Arduino the tiniest of Arduinos that you can get now and this one is the Adafruit Trinket which we can actually uh, use to uh, put a programmable um, Roger Beep tone in this and I could run multiple tones um, which will probably just go with this standard Roger Beep and the circuit I'm going to use for this is this one here which I managed to find online now this is based on the your, your standard Arduino board which is rather large and of course that ain't going to fit in this case and what I've had to do to get this in the case it's going to be battery powered um, I've got a little switchable uh, battery box there for some batteries because uh, it doesn't use much much power and then I've made a label for the top of it I don't know if you can see that there so we've got an off position to save the batteries, a beep position which will obviously do your Roger beep and then a lock position which you can use for uh, locking the PTT so when you're on a long QSO you can leave it locked in and what I can do is I can write some code into the Arduino uh, so that it doesn't stay locked so if you forget it doesn't stay keyed up it will actually time out on there so um, yeah I'm gonna throw all this together I've got the components in a little bag here so not much to it, a transistor and some capacitors and bits and bobs. And then we'll play around with the code and we'll try it out. And um, perhaps we can get this thing to whistle Dixie. Um, that's going to annoy quite a few people, isn't it? So uh, let's try anyway, let's see how we get on. Right, the first thing to do is to get this piece of ribbon cable connected up to my three position switch. Okay, we've got our uh, two strips of connections in on the switch. It's... Uh, Get it um, neatly, as neatly as I can anyway, wired up. It's super important to get the rest of the hardware into the microphone while we're doing this. So we've, we've uh, stuck the, uh, the battery holder on top of the microphone element there. We've took the switch out of the case for now, so it'll be easier for us to actually work with. And then we, we've not got much room for this little Arduino board, but um, as you can see, I'm sure we can slide it in somewhere and it, there might even still be enough room. It's so tiny to stick it on the back of the actual battery case. So anyway, let's see what works best. We're mounting the Arduino in this location here, just before the hinge lid of the case, it means the battery lid can open up and hinge that way. And we've still got access to the USB port easily from the side if we need to reprogram things. Uh, and it clears the little uh, nubbin that comes through from the mic hook through the back there. Now, I could probably grind that down flat and uh, to stop it interfering with the board, but if I position the board into this position, it does hit the board. So there's not a huge amount of clearance, but that'll work fine in that location. And just for now, we'll hold it down with a little bit of uh, double-sided tape. So uh, it's not really going to go anywhere inside the mic, and it doesn't have to look anything special it's just got to do what i want it to do so uh, which i'm sure it will now in terms of cost um these boards can be picked up very cheaply for under five pounds if you shop about and the microphones themselves i get all my microphones uh, like this from knights these can be picked up for a tenner so with just a few components for, i'd say for less than 20 quid you can knock one of these up and um, they're great fun and it introduces you to programming of course and um, once you've got this system in place you can add all manner of, of things to it of course if should you wish but the only um, downside is as with lots of CBs you will have to put batteries in because 
there is not really a, tw a, a supply that you can use inside the microphone unless you have one of the later radios with the multi-pin connectors where they offer that to you. So um, this is very, it's very much really just because I enjoy using the Roger Beep and uh, on things like the Amstrad 901 here we have the facility to switch it on and off. So that's what I wanted to do and this is the reason for doing it. Right, what I'm going to do, I'm going to solder the components, the transistor, the resistors and things uh, around this potentiometer. Now the potentiometer is used to adjust the volume of the beep. And so before we pop that transistor in, we'll just test it on the multifunction tester here. Now if you haven't got one of these and you do repairs, I really recommend you get one because they're great for testing all components and as we can see here, this this uh, uh, transistor is absolutely fine, so uh, we're good to put it in. I mean, you can also check, because I wasn't sure without looking, which is the emitter pin. And we can see there the emitter pin is, is pin 1, or connection point 1, as we look at it. So, uh, yeah, very useful. Okay, so that's all the components on the pot, like the capacitor, the resistor and everything. And we'll try and sequest it somewhere in this case. I think I have the idea for the place. I'm going to drop it in, so we'll try. Right, there we go. I think that's a, a really good little place for that. It's nicely wedged in there, and it will let me uh, adjust the volume up and down when I'm uh, testing it, and uh, it shouldn't get in the way of anything there. We can certainly route the microphone wires around that. So let's um, let's get the rest of it hooked together. Right, uh, that looks complicated. It really isn't complicated at all. Uh, I've just got to connect the um, the lead up to the radio and then I've got to put the code in. So what I've basically got is, like I say, the, the two modes off, on with the beep or lock, which locks the PTT. And just, just to show you that I've got it powered up here, I've got the switch I've got to uh, pop back in because uh, I have to take the label off, so we'll just hold it there. And there you go. That's, that's it powered up. It's quite a bright um, LED on the top of the... Uh, the unit there that pink led and the status led is flashing there but we've got no code in it and these little units will run uh python uh so you can just plug it into your your uh, pc and load a Py python script up to it and this is the um the adafruit uh, io so you can see it's got it's got um five six inputs one two three four five inputs sorry um and you can configure them as inputs, outputs, touch control circuits, um, DACs, you know, so very, very versatile little unit, really. Um, I mean, it's just, it's a bit of a sledgehammer to crack in, uh, I'll give you that, but it's fun. So, um, and it's going to be nice being able to just program in different tunes, different codes, just for fun, just for the hell of it, really. So, um, yeah, next step is to get the code sorted and then uh, try it out on the radio. And uh, I've wired it for Amstrad, so we can try it out on this very, very nice Amstrad 901. Okay, so here is the, the code in the uh, Arduino IDE. Um, first, what we do is we define the notes that we're going to use. These aren't all the notes that are in the Roger Beat, but these are all of your note options that you can use. So if you've got a specific tune to play, these are the reference tables for the frequency of the tone that will be played on the pin of the Arduino and all that we're doing here is um, initializing setting up what pins do what on the Arduino I keep calling it an Arduino it technically isn't an Arduino but it will work with this code okay and it's a very very basic uh, circuit that the guy has done here uh, where it basically reads the status of the analog pin and if it's high uh, it will go into transmit and if it's low so if it's pulled low it will uh, go into transmit and it does that using a, a transistor to basically switch the PTT line down to ground and and then what it will do and detects that it will play the play the the tune or the note that you've got uh, programmed down here now it'd be quite a bit of work to work out what that would be with regard to tunes but I'm sure once you've got your head around it it wouldn't be so hard and all I've done here is added in a selection of code for the PTT lock and like I say I will probably add a timeout feature in that so very very basic program and um, the code for this is on the website that I showed linked and so if you do want to use this uh, you can do that if you want to use 
my code if you want to have a go at doing this yourself uh, I'll also link my version of this in the uh, description below this video right you've had a look at the code you can see sort of how relatively basic it is what I've got here is on this little setup here I've just got a little LED which mimics the PTT light so that syncs every time this keys up the radio so when we press the PTT button on here we're not actually uh, activating this through the switch the, the controls are all done by the Arduino so the Arduino is controlling the PTT so we, we also have a, a little audio amplifier connected up to the output here so you can hear the tone okay so you can hear that the amplifier is on got this little amplifier connected to the output of the Arduino and we'll key up the Arduino it's tricky to do one-handed but keep your eye on the LED down the bottom there uh, you can see so that's indicating that we've gone into transmit and then on release that's our tone so I'll do it again transmit and release and you'll notice that the TX light stays illuminated while it's playing the tone and drops out okay uh, so that's totally repeatable like I said, with that tone chart that you saw in the code, you could put tunes, um, Dixie, you know, really get annoying, <laughs> put whatever you like on it. Um, and what we've also got on this one is the PTT lock feature as well. Uh, and that basically just is is uh, switched on by putting the switch into the other position, which drives the, uh, the, the radio into PTT as well. The advantage of doing the lock position with the Arduino is you can put timeouts in there and things like that. Um, so it will lock out and you have to reset it um, so there are advantages of doing that to stop people leaving the radio keyed up so um, what I think then the next step is as you can see that this is working is to actually get the microphone lead connected up to it and then we'll try it out on uh, on the radio okay so we've got the uh, Amstrad 901 sat in the corner there and all the mess Amstrad 901 now I'm aware that the Amstrad 901 does have a Roger Beep <laughs> I've just wired this for an Amstrad 901 microphone because I've got a few lying around. We've got a few 900s as well, which haven't got the Roger Beep. So, um, we've got the uh, President Randy here just monitoring on channel 29. So we're keying up, keying up on the radio. And there's our Roger Beep, we'll do it again. Keying up, and there's a the Roger Beep. Um, I did have to make, make one slight modification because the PTT line from the radio obviously is at uh, 12 volts and that was feeding up through the Arduino and powering it on so all I did to stop that was just pop a diode a little for IN414148 in there just to stop the, the, uh, the that being powered up via the signal from the radio and that was all I had to do so the Arduino exclusively controls the PTT line here it's not coupled to the switch so if your batteries go flat you lose your PTT but I mean, to be honest, this is this just a bit of fun. It's, I mean, wouldn't, you wouldn't use it for perhaps a practical rag chewing mic if you was out driving the lorry. But um, I've just done this for a bit of fun. Now, there probably there are probably are ways where you could get that to work. But the trouble you would have is, is if you did couple the output of this to the output of that, it would get into a loop and lock itself up. So uh, I've just uh, just wired it as per the diagram, which I will link in the description if you want to have a go at making one of these yourself i mean even on the coin cells this will last a good amount of time and of course you don't have to use coin cells i just use these because i had them in you could pop a little lithium battery in there and the nice thing about the these little ladder fruit boards is that you can charge the battery through the usb port so um if you can position this the board such that it comes through the side of your case you can literally charge the microphone up and then stick a little lithium battery in the back of the case um, plenty of and then there's plenty of capacity there a lot of people actually run these as like button badges with uh, coin cells anyway so you know they are very low power consumption and you've got the the on off switch on the top All right I suppose well uh, the, the next step is before we finish the video is to uh, make sure we can <laughs> close the lid and we'll run it off of the battery so we'll do it completely self-contained and uh, that'll finish this off nicely and then I'll I'll cobble together the information uh, for you guys if you fancy a little play around doing this. You can you you can obviously do this on ham radio radios. You can do this on um, uh, CBs on PMR radios even if you've got them with an external mic. And yeah, it's um, not all radios have the Roger Beat function. And I say the nice thing is you've got spare inputs even on here that you could trigger 
it to play a tune when you press a certain button such as the uh, the Dixie tune which really does get the nose of some people these days for some reason I'm probably not going to go into on here so um, yeah I just thought you guys would enjoy this so let's uh, throw it all together put the case on and then uh, try it for one last time and uh, I'll bid you adieu there we go there's the little uh, adapter I printed for the top of it I'll probably stick another sticker over it as well and um, we got the Roger Beat mic. Let's try it one more time. Just quickly show you the, the lock function as well. So that's it, there's the lock. And turn it off. You don't get the Roger Beat with that, but then just switch it over to Roger Beat mode to do your Roger Beat. There you go. So there we go. I've stuck the label on the top and uh, we've got it all, all hooked up. It's all nicely in the case those little cells or i mean it's six volts it'll actually run all the way down to three volts before it actually switches off so you can actually flatten those cells and they'll, they'll last a fair old while much as long as ever i'll need it anyway so uh well like i say if you uh if you wanted to make a long range version of this you can always uh fit um lithium batteries inside and you've got that option then to charge the microphone up should you wish to i just thought some of you might like to uh, attempt to do this yourselves or um, you might not <laughs> but um i think uh, the next step will be to add that dixie button as a standalone uh, little push button i can push which will just play the uh, jukes of hazard theme to uh, the <laughs> and uh <laughs> just for fun and just on cb of course i won't do that on uh, amateur radio so if you have been Thanks ever so much for watching and we'll give it one more try and catch you on the next one.